Hey there, Cesar Rodriguez. In the next couple of minutes, I want to talk about one of the most important aspects of your business, and that is the weekly business briefing or the open house or the opportunity overview. Whatever name you want to give it, in most areas, there is a weekly business briefing going on in most markets where you actually get a chance to bring prospects to that event. They see a very professional presentation and that way they get to see a PowerPoint and a top speaker going up there, going over all the information and it's a great opportunity for your prospects to get in the business. Now, most people across the country are treating that opportunity event completely wrong, completely wrong and it blows me away and I'm gonna give you my personal philosophy on how to properly take advantage of that event and the importance of it in your business and I'm really gonna twist up your mind and when I do this, by the time I'm done, I'm going to literally have exploded your business if you take what I'm about to say to heart and you take it very, very seriously. So let me give you my philosophy. Number one, you need to be at your event every single week. No exceptions, don't miss. Listen, whether you have a prospect or not, you need to be there because you need to study that presenter, you need to study that presentation, you need to be around the environment, get the third party stories, build the relationships, make the networking connections at the event with the other people, and you really need to get in the deal because that's how you get to be that presenter of that presentation. Listen, I went over and over and over and over again. Even when I didn't have people, do you know why? Because if your mindset is to just get through this business and if your mindset is to go to the event to get through it, well then guess what? You're not gonna get anything from it. But if your objective is to go there and to get from, getting through it's gonna be a breeze. I can tell you when I was building my business before I was ever a speaker, I never wanted to miss that event. Prospect or no prospect, even if I wasn't gonna make money because I had no guests there, because my goal was to study that trainer, to study their mannerisms, to get the one-liners, the jokes and I wanted to have that PowerPoint presentation memorized and down pat so I knew if I could have that presentation down so strong that it is literally committed to memory every th single slide every single word well then I knew what chance does a prospect have in front of me if I'm taking them out to lunch to talk about this business they don't have a chance if I'm so sharp and I'm so refined that I can do that presentation in my sleep out of my head live while eating all right so the deal is this you want to go to study to be a leader. That's how you get in front of the room. And if you don't have any ambition to get in front of the room, hey, that's okay. Just get the knowledge to know that you could if you needed to. And I can promise you, when you get to that level of skill, nobody that you sit down in front of one-on-one -on -one is gonna have a chance. And that's obviously the goal, all right? Now, let me talk to you about the philosophy about this meeting. So number one, we need to get your head straight. And we need to, number one, make sure that you're there as often as humanly possible, all right? Bearing some type of death in the family, you need to treat this like a business and just go and keep track of how many events that you go to in a row. Keep a running tally. Know what your commitment is because when you bring someone on board, it's easy to say, hey, listen, I've been to the past, I've been to the past 52 meetings in a year and I've never missed. That's the type of commitment I'm looking for for someone to come on board. So if we take you on board, do, do you have that type of commitment? I never miss. You have to be like the rock of Gibraltar. Your commitment's gotta be so strong because if you waver once, if you miss one that you could have gone to, then your team gets to always say, well, you know, hey, you didn't go to one and you're doing okay, so why do I have to go? So you need to be like the rock of Gibraltar. You need to be solid and you need to make that the foundation of your business, number one. Number two, let me tell you about the money-making opportunity that is actually there for you. Most people treat this event completely wrong. The opportunity overview, that business briefing is not the start of the week, it's the end of the week. That's the wrap up, that's the sweep up for your event. That's the sweep up for your week. I used to have, when I was building my business hardcore and I was just trying to establish myself, I used to have four to five guests there a week and people would always wonder because they would always sign up and they'd say, my God, Caesar, what are you doing? What are you saying? And here's what I did different. Most people use that event as their first exposure because granted, if you've got one going on in your area, it is probably one of the best exposures to the business because they meet other people, they hear testimonials, they see a very professional presentation. I mean, it just looks great. So here's where people mess up. They try and hit a home run on that meeting. So if your meeting, for example, is on a Tuesday night, you don't want to be talking about the Tuesday night meeting to a prospect on Wednesday when it's a week from now because sometimes we sell that meeting because we get so excited, we go, man, I got to have five people here next week. So here's what you need to do. 
What you need to do is you need to pre-expose those people before that event as fast as possible and with as many days in front of that event. So for instance, the last thing, look, it makes me cringe when someone says to me like on a Thursday or on a Friday, hey Caesar, I got five people coming on Tuesday. They're excited about it, I'm depressed. I'm like, what do you have five, why, why do you have five people waiting a couple of days to go to an event? Because here's what's gonna happen. You got five people that you talked to and you said, man, I got back from this event, it is awesome. I'm so excited, oh my God, wait till you see this. I met this guy, he's making like a million dollars a month. You're all excited, right? So you're just hyping everything up. And then you make that event seem so great that they just feel like, man, I gotta go to that thing. And then guess what happens? Tuesday rolls around, four out of the five crap out on you and some excuse comes up, something happens, and then guess what? You say, all right, well listen, you missed the event, you know, um, and you gotta call them up and they go, was well, there another one coming up? And guess what, now you gotta wait a whole nother week to bring them to the next one, then something else comes up, and they just go, well, obviously you guys do this every week, I'll go the next time that I have a free night, and you're done. So here's what you do. I never use or talk about that event as a first exposure ever. I say, listen, we're gonna have an open house. It's an opportunity for associates and people that are with our company to meet and mingle around, meet some other people. They're even gonna do an overview. It's gonna be a great training opportunity and it's gonna be an opportunity for you to make money because you know what? If we can go ahead and, and get you to see this and Mr. Rodriguez or whatever expert you're working with agrees to go ahead and take you on board, that day, this next Tuesday, about a week from now, you'll be in a position to make several hundred dollars that night if you're positioned and they do decide to take you on board before you come to this open house. So you need to use that event as a sense of urgency. So they're looking at their watch going, oh gosh, so this thing is on Tuesday and it's Wednesday now, so I've only got like you know, five to six days you know, to be able to take advantage of what's gonna happen on that event. Oh man, well I need to go ahead and, you know, I need to go ahead and take a look at whatever you got going on because if that's a money-making opportunity, hey, I wanna take advantage of it. You see the, the mindset? And the meeting is for the people. The only time I invite people to the meeting is get this now. Now listen, your goal is to have prospects at that event, but that's not the best first exposure. That's the best cleanup. What I've always used the business briefings for is that's where I take all of the people throughout the week that I've already exposed, I put on sizzle calls, I put on websites, I've sat down, they've seen DVDs or they've seen material, they've gone through a full presentation and maybe they're still on the fence and they're kind of like, well, you know, I don't know, I, you know, maybe I want to think about it or I'm not quite sure. That's a great place to say, listen, well, great, before you make your final decision, we have an event coming up in about two days. Let me see if I can get such and such on the phone. Always use a third party to confirm them. Listen, people that say, oh, I got five people on coming to the event. I got three people coming to the event. My question is always, I'm like, no, you don't. I, and they say, well, how don't you? Why don't you? Well, my question to them is, who confirmed them? And if they go, well, I just told them these are my buddies, then you have nobody coming. If a third party has not con confirmed your guests and said, and if you have not gotten them on the phone and said, hey, Mr. Rodriguez, listen, this, you know, he, here's the thing. I've got these people. I've got this gentleman on the line. He really wants to go to the event. You know, would it be okay if we put him on the guest list? I know it's short notice. If you don't have that expert like me to say, well, sure, let me talk to him. Hey, by the way, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Let me get the first and name, first and last name and, uh, and the spelling of your name, blah, blah, blah. Let me get your phone number. I'll go ahead and put you on the guest list and save a seat for you. If you don't have that going on, they're going to crap out. Once again, they have no accountability because if they're answering to you, they'll give you the excuse. If they're answering to someone else, then they're probably not going to want to give that person the excuse, especially if it's someone they think they have to impress and that's up to you to edify that expert. So again, the meeting, if you use it, number one, the way that I've always done is I'll expose everyone all right, throughout the week. I'll get as many sit downs, as many overviews, as many you know, logins to the website as I possibly can. And then I use that as an event to bring them to. So I always use the event as a tool for urgency to get the prospects to want to get in so that they can bring their prospects to that event. See, it's never for the prospect to check it out unless it's about 24 to 48 hours before. Now, in the case where maybe I talk to someone, the event is on Tuesday, we spoke about it, and it, let's say it's Monday, and I say, listen, can you get on the internet tomorrow, or can you get on the internet tonight, and if they go, look, I can't, well, listen, can you, if they can't review any information, I'll say this, I'll say, well, listen, you know, here's the deal, there's actually an event going on, there's an open house, you know, it, it's kind of short notice, but um, it's going on to Tuesday night. Um, let me do this. If I could get you to come to this event, it would definitely give you the inside feel of kind of what we got going on. And let me see if I can make a phone call and I might be able to get you to that. Now look, if I could arrange that, do you see any reason why you couldn't go? 
At that point, that's when I'm gonna make the invitation and that's the only time I'll let that meeting be the first exposure. But I'll never, you know, what I call brown bagging people and bringing them, you know, you, you tell them, say, hey man, I got a great meeting for you to go to. Never call it a meeting, by the way, it's always an open house, all right, a business briefing, an overview. You know, always, you know, make sure you use that language right. And I'll never brown bag someone and say, well, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. You just got to show up. You got to be there. You learn everything because then that apprehension is too much. People that you just introduce like that and don't give any preliminary information, their mind is going to start playing tricks on them. They're going to tell one of their friends or coworkers, yeah, I'm going to some meeting tomorrow. And they're going to go, oh man, you're going to a meeting, dude. You know, they're going to get you. That's probably Amway. You know, that's probably, <laughs> you're probably going to be out there selling some crazy juice. Yeah, man, I went to one of those. Hey man, hide your wallet. You know, and they're going to cop out at the last minute. So if you want to prevent that, pre-expose them, give them some information, try to get them to a presentation beforehand. Let the meeting be the home run hit to just close it up. Let that be the end of your week, not the start of your week. And I can promise you, if you follow those philosophies and you invite people in the way that I talk to you, make sure you confirm your guests, that event is going to be a money maker for you if you commit to going and you commit to making sure that your team goes. Again, it said a long time ago, it was written in the Bible when they were building the Christian religion, they said, never neglect the assembly of the people. The meeting is the assembly of the people in your business. So never neglect it. Invite properly. Use these fundamentals. And again, we'll see you over the top.